Yeah, Adam, coming up, we'll get to see Deshaun Watson. All he did last week in his first career start for Clemson, throw a school record six touchdown passes. He and Clemson, that game will start on ESPN3. Thank you, Adam. Vic Beasley, one sack shy of the school record of 28. He and Clemson take on NC State. That begins on ESPN3. It'll move to ESPNU when you guys are done. Adam. Here in Death Valley, the air's a touch crisper and the temperature's a bit cooler. We're getting a glimpse of autumn on this first Saturday of October. It's Clemson taking on North Carolina State. This rivalry began back in 1892. In the early 1980s, they dubbed it the Textile Bowl. You and I missed the memo, Kelly Stauffer. We kind of came in secondhand synthetics. But these two quarterbacks that we'll see today, they're cut from premium cloth. Both of them playing lights out, and you rarely see offenses playing at this level if the quarterback position isn't playing at a high level, and that's what we're going to have here today. Speaking of those two quarterbacks, Jacoby Brissett, even though NC State lost to Florida State, he made some eye-popping plays. Oh, yeah, and North Carolina State desperately needed an answer at this position coming into this season, and boy, did they get one. Brissett has been playing at such a high level, really in every aspect of the game, decision-making, impromptu plays, and how about this young guy? What are we going to get out of him today? We saw his first start last week, and it was simply spectacular. Doing so many things that not only do you, do you not see consistently at this level, sometimes you don't see it consistently at the next level on Sundays either. Watson last week in his first career start set a school record with six touchdown passes, 435 yards through the air, the second most ever by a Clemson quarterback. And don't sleep on the defenses here today. Both of them are playing at an extremely high level as well. Clemson won the toss. They will receive. Here is T.J. Green out of his own end zone. Far sideline, tries to cut back to the middle, and he's wrapped up at the 17-yard line. And what will Deshaun Watson do for an encore? I'm waiting to see it. I'm excited about that. He was unbelievable in his first start a week ago. Finding the right guy, throwing the right ball, recognizing pressure. It'll be interesting, Anish, today to see how North Carolina State's defense tries to defend that guy. Blitz him at your own risk. Screen pass to Adam Humphreys on first down. He's across the 20-yard line and dropped at the 22 by Dravius Wright. See what Deshaun Watson has done this season. Ten touchdown passes, one interception. When he threw the pick against North Carolina last week, he followed that up with three straight touchdown passes. Watson again to Humphreys. Trick play. No, Humphreys will keep it. And he shuffles out of bounds near the 25-yard line. It will bring up third down. I, I think you were right. I think Humphreys was thinking about throwing that one. I think it was at least an option, but... Deshaun Watson, he made Watson, one decision that was a poor one. They call it here at Clemson an impulse decision, and typically those don't go very well. His was picked off, but other than that, he made some great decisions in the pass game and the run game as well. On third down, another screen pass. That's caught, and C.J. Davidson picks up a Clemson first down. It's a gain of four. The swing pass quickly out to C.J. Davidson, who has that track speed, but the key here is the accuracy. Allow C.J. Davidson to get the ball out in space and then cut it upfield, and that was well done by the youngster, Watson. Watson fakes it to Goldman. Has time, slings it over the middle. Incomplete intended receiver. It was Jordan Leggett, the tight end, who had a touchdown grab last week, covered by Jarvis Bird. Yeah, it's good to see Jarvis Bird back. We know his inspirational story. Three 
knee injuries, and that was really good coverage right there. Kind of play action pass and a throwback trying to get the tight end across the formation, and Bird covered it extremely well. That's Gallman. He breaks the tackle, and he picks up four yards. Tackled by Rodman Noel, the older brother of Philadelphia 76ers first round pick Nerlens Noel. As for Gallman, he's making his first start today. Clemson is trying to ignite the rushing attack. They've not really gotten good production from the running backs this season. Watson on the quarterback keeper. Deshaun to the 40, stiff arm, and he's out of bounds at the 43-yard line, driven out by Noel. A gain of 11 and a first down for the Tigers. And that was a designed quarterback run. You can see the running back Goldman getting up inside, and it essentially becomes a quarterback lead. That's a changeup in the run game, and Chad Morris told us that, so there's going to be more designed quarterback runs here this afternoon. Watson with time. Palms floats it downfield. Williams wide open to the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, Clemson. Six-yard strike from Deshaun Watson to Mike Williams. Those two were in sync last week as well. Yeah, and Mike Williams ran a double move outside, kind of a stick and go, and runs right by Hakeem Jones, number 20. And you can see the slight pump fake on the back end by Watson and then Williams downtown. Extra point by Amon Lakeup is good. We wondered what Deshaun Watson would do in his second career start. Could he top last week? He's off to a terrific start already. And Ishraf Kelly Stauffer coming to you from Death Valley already. A terrific start for the true freshman, Deshaun Watson. And Deshaun Watson really likes number seven, Mike Williams. And they set this play up really nicely. He's going to run right there. Go ahead and let it roll, guys. And then the trap. Watch the safety jump. The stick move by Williams down at the bottom, and then Williams runs right by him. And once again, the youngster Deshaun Watson throws a perfect pass. Yes, it was well set up, and Jones jumped all over it, but you still have to throw the right ball, and Watson did just that. Williams coming off a game where he had two touchdown receptions and a career-high 122 receiving yards. Now we've heard coaches tell us that Mike Williams reminds them a lot of Nuke Hopkins and Martavis Bryant. Two pretty good receivers here at Clemson. Yeah, big body, big play guys. You're exactly right. End over end kick by Bradley Pinion. Matt Days from his own end zone, and he'll stay put. NC State will begin at its own 25 yard line. Last year, the Wolfpack struggled to find a quarterback. Jacoby Brissett has been the guy, and he's brought stability to that position. Yeah, not only stability, Anish, but he's actually playing at a really special level. It's one thing to get an answer there that brings that stability you referred to. It's a far another matter to get a guy that's playing at a really special level, and Jacoby Brissett is doing just that. A play we saw against Florida State. You may not see a better play from a quarterback all season. That was off the hook. On first down, Brissett over the middle, and that's batted down right at the line of scrimmage by the middle linebacker, Stephon Anthony. Stephon Anthony doing a nice job of just catching the quarterback's eyes from his middle linebacker position. You'll see him in the middle of the field right there, getting up and getting that left hand on it. Tony Creasy starts out in the backfield. He gets the call and gets nowhere. Met by Grady Jarrett. Creasy last week against Florida State only played five snaps and did not have a carry. Nobody has been successful running the football against this defense. Maybe the best defensive front in all the land, and they, they build a perimeter around the run game, and then they pressure the tar out of you in the pass game. NC State has been averaging more than 230 yards per game on the ground. Clemson has given up a total of just 104 in the last three games combined. <laughs> a 
on third down. Brissett's pass incomplete, intended for Jonathan Alston. He was covered by Gary Peters, who was outstanding against UNC yeah, last week. we saw him last week, and he was very, very good. And that throw was just simply behind Alston right there. Get that ball out in front of him, and that's a conversion. Maybe a little nerves early on, but again, that pressure up front, even when Clemson does not get the quarterback on the ground, they give you the impression that they're close, and that's what happened to Brissett on that play. Will Bauman on to punt it away, averaging better than 49 yards a boot this season. That would rank second in the country if he qualified with enough attempts. Adam Humphreys from the 32. And he is devoured right at the 35-yard line, a 43-yard punt. Short return. And Deshaun Watson leads this Clemson offense back out onto the field for the second offensive possession for the Tigers. Watson last week, six touchdown passes, a Clemson school record. He tied an ACC record, 435 yards in a 50-35 win over North Carolina. Humphreys in motion. Watson hands it off. And that's Wayne Gallman with a strong run on first down. He picks up about nine. That was a pretty good week for number four. I know that's a pretty full graphic, but <laughs> it's needed because those are all really, really special moments. And that was his first start. And, you know, encore performance here today. Can't wait to see this. On second and short, Watson with time to the air. Going long for Jermon Hopper. Out of contact downfield, no flag. Hopper covered by Justin Burris. Hopper and Watson hooked up a couple times last week. Yeah, this is great coverage, though, by Burris. He actually is in phase, meaning he's right in great position in front of the receiver, and then he does the main thing, which is turn around and locate the football at the end. Last week, Hopper had a touchdown catch of 74 and another one of 50 yards from Watson. Quarterback draw, and Watson close to midfield, and he picks up a Clemson first down. This is the changeup in the run game that Chad Morris told us about. This is a designed quarterback power. You can see an offensive lineman pulling the running back, getting up inside, and that's a power play. Offensive lineman arrives first, kicks out, running back comes behind, and Deshaun Watson was always intended to carry that football. Watson, screen pass. Williams on the perimeter, and he's dragged down by Hakeem Jones, the safety. It's a gain of eight. And Mike Williams had a great game last week, a touchdown already. And oh, by the way, it's his birthday. Well, he's off to a pretty good start on his birthday, but you can see last week, and there's a chemistry building right now between Deshaun Watson, the true freshman, and Mike Williams. And not a bad decision by Watson to find the 6'4", 210 pounder. Watson will keep it, running left side. Chase breaks the tackle. And he's to the 32-yard line, brought down by Contavious Street, a true freshman in the prize of NC State's recruiting class. And last week, North Carolina was shutting down the run and forcing Watson to pass the ball. And the adjustment by Chad Morris early in this game, in the run game, is quarterback-designed runs and more quarterback reads. Good protection. Watson downfield. Reaching forward is Williams and the birthday boy has his second touchdown of the game. Anisha, it's going to be interesting to see if Mike Williams secures the ball all the way to the ground. He's doubled inside and out, stretches out. Does he secure the football? And the key there, the ball can hit the ground, but it can't move after he receives it. I'm not sure I see anything on that play that's going to reverse it. Remember, the ruling on the field was a touchdown, so you need indisputable video evidence to contradict the call on the field. Do you see any of it right there, partner? That's the thing. I'm not sure if it's clear, but if it's not clear, the call on the, place, the, call, call on the field stands. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what they're going to go with. And the officials now are going to officially stop play and roll it again to take a further review. I think this is wise on the replay official's part, but Williams stretches out, 
has the football, comes to the ground, and that's not the important thing. The ball can hit the ground in his possession, but it can't move once he's possessed the ball and then hit the ground. And I'm just not so sure we're going to see any indisputable video evidence. This might be a pretty good look right here. Can you tell? I can't tell. I think what we're going to hear is what you said. I think the play is going to stand as called on the field, which is a touchdown. And those are some spectacular looks. We just don't see anything to dispute what was called on the field originally. Great throw, great catch wow. if it stands. I mean, you talked about Bryant and Hopkins. After further review, the rolling on the field stands as called. Touchdown. That's what we anticipated, but Mike Williams is quickly becoming that big-bodied guy that is a matchup issue. That time it was double coverage outside, and he just blew right by that double. They've had good receivers here at Clemson, especially recently, the likes of Nuke Hopkins, Martavis Bryant, and Sammy Watkins was phenomenal. And Mike Williams looks poised to join some pretty good company. Williams off to a terrific start. Three catches, 96 yards, and two touchdowns. And Clemson up two scores early. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. 9.42 to go in the first quarter, and already it's 14-0 Clemson on top of NC State. Deshaun Watson, a pair of touchdown passes to his sophomore wideout, Mike Williams. Well, we talked about, you know, what is Deshaun Watson going to do for an encore? What he's going to do is he's going to find out how to use his weapons, and Mike Williams is maybe chief among them right now. What if they get a running game going? What's his offense look like? Scary thought, not just for the Wolfpack, but for the rest of the ACC. Anish, what I wanted to show you is this is an example of how you throw your receiver open. Williams is doubled inside and out, but he's not doubled down the field. Throw it just a little bit longer and allow him to go get it. And that's exactly what number seven does for number four. NC State needs a counterpunch. Oh, right here. It's very, very important that this game's going to get out of hand. Dave Doran talked about taking the crowd out of it with some early points. That hasn't happened. Shadrach Thornton into the game at running back. This is Brian Underwood on the fly sweep, and he gets right back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second down and 10. Underwood, remember, in the game against Clemson last year in Raleigh, had that controversial play where he was running down the sideline. It looked like he stayed in bounds, and it would have been a touchdown. It would have changed the game. Instead, the officials ruled him out of bounds. And because the officials blew the whistle and the ball was dead, the play couldn't be reviewed. And when you looked at the replay, it didn't look like he went out of bounds. Yeah, I think the officials missed one, but there's nothing they could do. They need some big plays like that here today. Brissett steps up, flushed, makes a move inside, and he's tripped up. Tackle made by Tony Stewart. It's third and long. Anish, what you see out of Clemson defensively is they're so well coached. They're rarely out of position. And as long as they stay focused and keep their eyes right, this is a difficult group because it all starts at the defensive end position with, with Beasley. But they are very, very good at every level on that defensive side. Pressure off the edge, safety blitz, Brissett in trouble, tries to escape the pocket, turns around, and that was nearly intercepted. Brissett came into the game having not thrown a pick at 156 straight passes. It's the quick edge by Beasley coming right there, and he forces Brissett up in the pocket, and then the chaos ensues, and eventually Corey Crawford almost forces Brissett into a really bad decision. Right there, nowhere to go up in the pocket, and then Corey Crawford cleans it up. That was almost a huge play by Wiggins. 
This Clemson defensive staff really challenged the Tiger D after last week. They thought Clemson played well in the first half against UNC, but lost focus in the second half. High punt by Bauman. Humphreys retreats to the 26. And Humphreys across the 35-yard line of the 36-yard line of Clemson. An 11-yard return after a 48-yard punt. It's already 14-0 Clemson. Deshaun Watson gets his third crack when we come back. ESPNU College Football is brought to you by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. It's technically fall, but it's still pretty over at the South Carolina Botanical Gardens, not far from Memorial Stadium. I drove through there yesterday. What'd you think? It was pouring rain, but it was a beautiful drive by. On first down, Wayne Gallman gets the call, and he takes it across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Early on, the story for Clemson, Watson, and Williams. You can't get much better than that, and you talk about a quick start. And how about the birthday boy, Williams, right there? How old is he today? He's already had two birthday presents, two touchdowns. That's pretty, pretty sweet. Watson, he'll keep it, gets a block from Gallman into NC State territory, still on his feet, and he skirts out of bounds at the 41, a run of 18 yards. We've already seen three quarterback-designed runs. Bowman, once again, from his running back position, it's somewhat of a quarterback counter. You can see the jab step to one side, and then the running back leads Deshaun Watson, the quarterback, around the edge once again. Low snap, Watson steps up, another deep ball. And that's incomplete, intended for Artavis Scott. That's Watson's roommate. You at, NC State is challenging these wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. And I'm not exactly sure that's a great idea. We've already seen Mike Williams get loose a little bit, and it's not really in the wheelhouse coverage-wise of this defense from NC State. Humphreys in motion. Watson, screen pass, nothing doing that time. Art Norman blew that play up right at the line of scrimmage. Impact players when Clemson has the ball. Yeah, and I like the corners. We've already talked about that. They're gonna have to hold up well in coverage, and then the run game needs to get going. Goldman right there, and then Norton, the center, represents everything up front that has to be better in the run game today for Clemson. Watson changing the play on third and ten. NC State bringing the blitz. Watson, screen pass, got his receiver. It's Gallman, the running back, and Gallman picks up a Clemson first down. There we see the improvisational skills of Watson. And great anticipation by Chad Morris of the third and long bringing the blitz. You can see all the pressure coming up inside. A perfect play call is a screen outside when you're getting pressure in the tackle box. Great anticipatory play calling by Chad Morris. On the ground. And that is Gallman again, a gain of five, and he's given this run game a spark. Clemson came in averaging just about three yards per carry as a team running the football. And that is the one area offensively that Clemson has to get better at if they want to run the table throughout this 2014 season. They have to run it better. Deshaun's already proven that he can throw the ball. They need a run game. Watson pumps, hit as he throws it. And that's too high intended for the tight end Stanton Seckinger. And what you saw in that last play, that's what NC State told us they want to do. Get pressure on Watson, hit him a few times, and see how he reacts to that. Yeah, Dave Doran actually is the one that gave us that information. They want to, in a sense, bloody the nose of the young quarterback and see how he responds. Well, I know this. UNC tried to pressure him last week, and every time they did, he not only held up, but he stung them with big plays. And NC State is getting after him early in this one.
Play clock running down, down to two, down to one, and did Clemson get the timeout? They did. First time out for the Tigers. Don't forget, 7 p.m. tonight on ESPNU, a good one in the Big 12. Texas Tech going to the Little Apple to take on 23rd-ranked Kansas State. Big question mark for the Red Raiders. Their quarterback, Davis Webb, will be a game-time decision. He hurt his non-throwing shoulder in the Thursday night loss to Oak State last week. That's a tough place to go in and play well. Snyder's, Coach Snyder's teams do not beat themselves, and you have to go in and play incredibly well to come out of Manhattan with a win. Deshaun Watson off to a terrific start after a record-setting first start. Watson 7 of 11, 120 yards, two touchdowns. We talked last week when we saw Clemson about his maturity, about his poise, wise beyond his ears. A lot of that comes from growing up. He, he uh, had to deal with some family issues with his mom battling tongue cancer, and when you have that growing up, that forces you to grow up quicker. Yeah, and that's really what you see out of him. He just simply doesn't seem phased by a whole lot. And we talked about the defensive game plan for NC State to get pressure on the youngster and try to get him off his game a little bit. I'm not so sure how you do it with number four out there. Watson again will keep it on the quarterback draw. Makes a man miss across the 20 and inside the 15-yard line all the way to the 13. Jared Fernandez is the one who brought him down. We've seen the quarterback lead draw a couple of times, and that's what we see here. You see the running back leading the quarterback up, and once the quarterback breaks the line of scrimmage, it's an impromptu go where there's green grass, and we didn't see a lot of that out of Watson last week because it wasn't needed. It might be needed here today. This is a handoff to Davidson. And he gets to the outside and scrambles out of bounds at the five-yard line. It's a gain of eight, second down and two. We've already seen a much more diverse and creative run game early in this one. Chad Morris talked about it, that North Carolina last week wanted to just jam the box and force the throw. And so they don't want to just go to the throw. They want to be more creative in the run game, does Clemson here this afternoon. Watson will keep it, and he hurdles the defender and into the end zone for a Clemson touchdown. What can't this kid do? I hope you're not waiting for an answer out of me because the answer is I, I really don't know. I, I haven't seen it. And once again, the design quarterback run and the Heisman type play outside. I didn't just put him on the Heisman watch list, but he's playing right now early in his career, somewhat Heisman-esque. We can hold off on that, but I'll tell you what, if he gets through this season healthy and continues to play well, I think he's got to go into next season as the front runner. I mean, there isn't anything that he hasn't handled as of now. You know, defense have tried to pressure him, he stands in the face of it and then finds open receivers and throws really good balls. And, and what are you going to do for an encore performance after what he did against UNC last week? He just simply finds the open guy and throws the correct ball, Anish. We're seeing a special start to maybe a really, really special career. Two touchdown passes to Mike Williams and then flies over Jack Tocho for a five-yard touchdown run. Watson, 62 yards on the ground, a buck 20 through the air. He's accounted for all three Clemson touchdowns. And yeah, we asked the question earlier, what will he do for an encore? Well, he might top last week, which sounds crazy. Yeah, take a look at it there. I mean, that those are just unbelievable numbers. And you're right, we need to tap the brakes a little bit. We but do. The bottom line is, everything the young man has been asked to do, he's exceeding all expectations. Days will down at the end zone, NC State from its own 25-yard line. If you think about the narrative for Clemson, after that Florida State game, it was heartbreak. Dabo Sweeney called that loss the worst of his coaching career. And then you saw what Watson did against North Carolina, making his first start. You had seen flashes of that when he had played earlier in the season. And all of a sudden, the narrative shifted from heartbreak to hope 
not just for the future, but what this team can do the rest of the way this season. Watson allowed this team to turn the page emotionally when he got his first start last week. Brissett rolling to his right. He's going to tuck it and run. He can't make Stephon Anthony miss. No gain, second down and 10. Kelly, what does NC State have to do to get going offensively? No first down so far, a couple of three and outs. I mean, NC State is built around establishing a power run game early. And yet nobody has run the ball on Clemson defensively this season. And I don't know that NC State's going to do that. So I think they need to attack the second level of this defense with the pass game. And I think that's what I would like to see right here on this drive. You don't need a lot of time to get receivers to that second level. Matt Days tripped up right at the line of scrimmage, and that Clemson front seven has been strong so far. Kelly impact players when the Wolfpack have the ball. Well, the reason I like Matt Days is what I just said, receiving at the second level, and then Rob Crisp has to hold up over Vic Beasley's going to be over his head most of the time, and we've already seen Stephon Anthony, the middle linebacker, plays downhill, but make Anthony cover number 21, Dave, out in open space in that pass game. We haven't seen much of the hurry up either so far from NC State. They haven't, been, they haven't been successful enough to maintain the football. You're exactly right. Got to get first downs. Brissett under pressure. Again, flushed. Chased by Garrett. And Brissett slides down. He got maybe a yard. And it's another three and out for the Wolfpack. NC State is getting zero separation down the field out of their receiving core. And that's not going to work. Grady Jarrett in the middle is going to continue to work hard. You can see the spin move inside. He actually went down and then pursuit from the inside from Grady Jarrett it was actually Lawson that lost his footing. But Grady Jarrett, the speed and athleticism from the inside, he's a state wrestling, wrestling champion, and he very rarely gets knocked off his feet. Brent Venables calls him the best player on this defense. Bauman gets this one off. They'll chase Humphreys back to the 20. And a seven-yard return by Adam Humphreys after a 53-yard punt. Let's check in with Matt Schick in the studio. Thank you, Anish. Interesting game brewing in Fort Worth. TCU already up 7-0. E.J. Catalan is in. TCU up 14-0 on number four Oklahoma toward the end of the first. Anish. Wow. <laughs> simultaneous, uh, simultaneous, wow. Now, TCU's given Oklahoma trouble the last couple of years, and nothing's easy. We found that out. Oregon going down Thursday night. BYU undefeated going down Friday night and losing Taysom Hill. Gallman bounces to the outside, uses a stiff arm on right, and Gallman finally taken down near the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Josh Jones and Jermaine Pratt. Chad Morris told us that Gallman was going to get an opportunity to jumpstart this run game. Nothing up inside, the vision to bounce it outside, and then obviously the speed to take advantage of what Gallman saw right there. 12 yards on that last play. Back to Goldman here on first down. And he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Anish, remember that Clemson lost Roderick McDowell was their main ball carrier a year ago, and they really hadn't found a guy to fill that void. And they're thin up front and a lack of playmakers at that running back position. They need to find someone to carry the rock. Another low snap. Gallman with a nice block. Watson takes a shot downfield and incomplete intended for Damari Kidd. He was double covered. So third down and 10. The key, Anisha, what you just said is Watson takes a shot. NC State is getting some pressure on the youngster, and that's exactly what Dave Dorn said. We want to see how he responds if we can get in his grill a little bit, and they have the last couple of times. He's off to a quick start. But more pressure out of NC State now. Both pack flashing blitz on third and ten. C.J. Davidson into the game at running back.
Jordan Leggett in motion. Here's the pressure. Watson over the middle. That's a Clemson first down. It's Mike Williams again. And Williams picks up 24. He's already over 100 yards receiving. And all of the pressure that you refer to leaves nobody in the middle of the field. And Mike Williams runs the slant up inside, and Watson finds it. It's diagnosing the pressure, and then the receiver, and then throwing the right ball. Watson hands it off. Davidson waiting for his blocks. And he plunges ahead to the 33-yard line. It's a gain of four. Well, here's the play before, and the pressure that you can see coming up inside, very well blocked by that offensive line, and then the receiver, Williams, coming inside where the void was. Pressure inside leaves a void. Send a receiver there and throw him the right football. Final 20 seconds of the first quarter. Clemson has scored on every drive. Watson will keep it himself, eludes a couple of defenders. And he picks up a yard. We're seeing a lot more quarterback runs out of Watson than we did last week. That's the addition in the run game. Trying to find a spark. Chad Morris is doing a nice job of mixing it up. Deshaun Watson has done everything else. Well, why not let him carry the football a bit? Clemson with 252 total yards in that first quarter. Watson accounting for all three touchdowns. Two through the air and one on the ground. Deshaun Watson picking up right where he left off last week against UNC. He has led Clemson on a scoring drive on the Tigers' first three possessions. Clemson threatening again. Adam Choice, the freshman on the screen, has a couple of blockers. And Choice all the way down to the 15-yard line. It's a gain of 16. And now penalty markers at the end of the play. After the play, personal foul, number 79 offense. Late hit, 15 yard penalty. The down count will be first down Clemson. That's the left tackle, Isaiah Battle. And just an offensive lineman working hard after the play and just working a little bit too hard right there. You know that Chad Morris has been in the ear of those guys to get it going. And sometimes that's a result. And those guys up front get lathered up. They get excited and sometimes take it just a little bit too far. But the swing screen to Adam Choice, get him out of the backfield, pull a couple of guys, and it's just a very, very, really addition to the, to the run game. Watson keeps it again. And he's spun down inside the 30-yard line. Gained a couple. Rodman Noel on the stop. But Clemson wants to go with pace as well. They don't go as fast as NC State if they could maintain the, you know, the football a little bit. But Chad Morris likes to go up tempo, tempo as well. There's the pressure. Clemson picks up the blitz. Now Watson in trouble, and he's sacked. Taken down by the safety, Josh Jones, and it's third and long for the Tigers. Well, the pressure from NC State is starting to have some effect. You can see Josh Jones initially gets caught up in traffic inside, but Watson, I don't think, recognized that it's not a defensive lineman or linebacker you're trying to get away from. That's a safety. It's hard to run from those guys blitzing up the middle. A 14-yard loss, and that knocks Clemson out of field goal range. You would anticipate screen once again right here. There's the screen. There's Williams. Gets a big block, and Williams takes it to the 32-yard line. So fourth down and about 12 coming up. You're looking at almost a 50-yard field goal from here. And Eamon Lakeup, his career long, he is a 45-yarder. That came last week against North Carolina. Yeah, this isn't exactly Lakeup's wheelhouse, but they're going to roll him out there and give him an opportunity. Lakeup had struggles in the loss to Florida State. Missed a chip shot, missed another one from 40 yards, but bounced back and hit both of his attempts against UNC a week ago. A 48-yarder. That is no good. 
show. Maybe NC State with something to build on. The Wolfpack stop the Tigers for the first time today. Deshaun Watson has been terrific so far, but a freshman mistake on that last drive. Yeah, a situational mistake. You're in a down and distance where you have to recognize pressure. You're in decent field goal range, and then he doesn't recognize not only the blitzer, but who is blitzing. And it's Josh Jones that's a faster guy, and he gets him on the ground. And now all of a sudden, Lakeup, who's had some issues field goal wise, is in a much different position. The Wolfpack looking to jumpstart their offense on this drive. NC State, nine plays, four total yards. This is a team that came in leading the ACC in total offense. From empty to under center. Brissett thought about the pass, hands it off to Shadrach Thornton. And he picks up three, tackled by Tony Stewart. Thornton had a big game against Clemson here a couple of years ago. A touchdown and 100 plus on the ground. Yeah, and here's the first time really that NC State's been wanting to go off Temple. You can see the numbers right there. Not approaching that yet this afternoon. Four man rush, Brissett downfield, and it's incomplete. Marquez Valdez Scantley could not hold on. It was blanketed by Robert Smith and Gary Peters. Valdez Scantley was running a corner with another receiver occupying the underneath coverage up front. Very well thrown. I don't know if Valdez Scanlon could have kept his feet in bounds, but he didn't come down with it anyway. Statistically, Jacoby Brissett was the best quarterback in the ACC entering this game, but just one for five so far, zero yards. And NC State is 0 for 3 on third downs. And here's Vic Beasley right in here, an inside pressure guy coming off the edge. Here's the pressure. Brissett steps up. Nowhere to go. The ball pops loose. Picked up by Clemson. Corey Crawford recovers it. And the Tigers will have it inside the NC State 15. With the threat of the edge pressure from Vic Beasley forces Brissett up in the pocket where there isn't any room to climb in the pocket is what they call that. The edge pressure forces the quarterback up prematurely, and you can see Anthony's in there and Crawford's in there. You also saw Grady Jarrett and Crawford's there to clean it up, but the edge pressure gives the illusion that the quarterback always has to climb in the pocket. There was nowhere to climb against this Clemson defense on that fly. There's Vic Beasley, the All-American, and Brissett. Remember, he had a couple of big fumbles in the second half against Florida State last week. Watson, end zone, incomplete. He tried to thread that one to leg it in double coverage. Second down. Good help by Josh Jones, Jones the safety coming over. Leggett was going to the corner, and actually, I think if that ball's driven in there a little bit more, there was a little bit too much air by Deshaun Watson on that play. This is Gallman, and he's ankle tackled as he picks up about seven. Nice play by Jared Fernandez, the middle linebacker, who had two picks in the Florida State game. And look at this hole right up the middle. If Webster could have actually gotten his guy just a little bit, Gallman walks into the end zone. Webster didn't take a very good angle on that second level, level defender. On third and three, back to the ground. Goldman's got a first down, tackled by Contavious Street, the true freshman. Goldman's given them a little something in that run game. Eight carries, 45 yards so far. He has a little more giddy up than we've seen in at that running back position so far. He seems a little bit more sure of himself. We've seen the vision, patient up inside, the vision to bounce it outside. Goldman remains in the game on first and goal. Watson's going to keep this one, and he's got his second rushing touchdown of the afternoon.
very well blocked up front. You can see J.J. McCollum coming up from his tight end position going across the formation. And even Humphreys, the wide receiver, started kind of in a wing position, blocks out, and very well designed. Deshaun Watson does not need a whole lot of room. Lincoln on for the point after. It's been all Clemson so far. 28 to nothing. And the freshman, Deshaun Watson from Gainesville, Georgia, has accounted for all four Clemson touchdowns. This one aided by an NC State turnover. Corey Crawford recovers the fumble, and then Watson on the zone read. It's 10 nothing in the second inning. We're calling this separation Saturday, and it might be tough come Monday for the college football selection committee if there aren't that many unbeatens left. Clemson's got two losses on its ledger, but with a 28-0 lead on NC State, the Wolfpack offensively have had zero so far. Four drives, the first three all resulted in a three and out. The last one, three plays, it ended with a turnover. Yeah, that's not good. Punt, 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 fumble, and you really haven't had anything that you can hang your hat on. I mean, really nothing. There was a flag on the field after the kickoff. NC State's offense is built around establishing a run game and a power run game nonetheless. Good luck against this defensive front seven for Clemson, and if you can't run it, it's very difficult to throw it against this group as well because they have edge pressure guys that just don't let you breathe. Now holding on NC State on a play that resulted in a touchback. The officials obviously have to run this by Dabo Sweeney as well. Yeah, that can be the only question whether they want to re-kick it. During the kick, there was holding number 27 of the return team. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchback. First down at the 25-yard line. Daquan Nichols called for holding, and it's all for naught. Yeah, I'm not sure why in the world you would take the penalty and want to re-kick that. I'm not sure what the point would be. Uh, first down, the give is to Matt Days, and again, NC State having all sorts of trouble against that Clemson front seven. J. Ron Curse making the tackle. Second down. NC State hasn't even penetrated their own 40 yet. You know, it's one thing to penetrate the other team's territory, but they haven't even gotten close to that. We told you earlier the Wolfpack came in averaging more than 230 rushing yards per game, minus 12 so far. Set hands it off. It's days again. It's going to bring up third down and nine. With Josh Watson that time, number 91, from his defensive tackle position. Clemson has depth inside as well. You look at that D line Beasley, a fifth year senior. Watson, a fifth year senior. Deshaun Williams, a senior. Jarrett and Crawford are both seniors. It's depth, it's experience, and they're all very good players. Yeah experience that has been incredibly productive in their careers here at Clemson. Brissett pressured by Beasley gets away and he picks up a couple but it's fourth down and NC State is looking at its fourth three and out of the game. This is what's tough. Beasley is quick around the edge and then it's the spin move. Rob Crisp is a very good left tackle, and he hardly touches number three on that play. That is cat-like quickness. 
NC State offensive coordinator Matt Canada told us that Clemson has the best front seven they've seen on tape so far and no evidence to the contrary in the first quarter plus. Fourth punt of the game for Bauman. And it's a good one. Humphreys back at his own 20. Turns up field as the 30. And he's wrestled out of bounds near the 40-yard line. A 50-yard punt, a 17-yard return. Watson and the Clemson offense go to work when we come back. With Kelly Stauffer and East Roth, Deshaun Watson has done the impossible. He has actually picked up where he left off. You talk about an encore performance. We actually were joking about it. You know, what is he going to do now? But he can't top last week. You right? know, that, that jump right there tops last week. And then he's, what they're doing with him is they're getting him involved in the run game. That's the only thing he didn't do last week. He accounted for six touchdowns last week, four today. Watson eludes a defender, chucks this one downfield. A lot of contact and a penalty marker. Justin Burris was all over Mike Williams. And Burris is a physical press corner guy. Pass interference, number 11 defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. This secondary for NC State prides themselves on being physical at the, at the press point of attack, and... I'm just not so sure unless there was an arm bar there that we couldn't see on that play. I think that's great coverage. I think you keep your flag in your pocket on that one. On first down, here's Adam Choice and a freshman to the 40 yard line. And it's a gain of five. And you go back to Deshaun Watson, four total touchdowns today, and we're seeing more of the run game out of the Clemson quarterback. Watson, quick release. That's a first down to Mari Kitt. Another true freshman. Artavis Scott is a true freshman. So is Watson. Adam Choice is a true freshman. A lot of youth on this offense, but talented youth. Clemson going quickly. Choice. And he gets a couple on first down, second and eight. And this is the first time that we've seen Chad Morris really go up tempo. They change paces, but this is in a hurry, and I think it's because kind of in response to NC State's pressure the last couple of series. Now they're speeding things up and see if Watson can handle this phase of the game. Choice goes wide, gets the screen, juggles it. Across the 30 and tackled at the 25 yard line. It's a gain of five. And a third down coming up for Clemson and the Tigers so far, eight for nine on third down. The tight end JJ McCullough doing a nice job of essentially leading the screen outside to the running back and just an extension of the run game. The diversity and the creativity in that run game today has been aided by that quick screen game in those swing passes like we saw right there. Clemson already at 300 total yards. On third down, Watson, quarterback draw. He's got the first down, sheds a tackler. And Watson finally brought down from the ankles by Mike Stevens. It's a first down for the Tigers. And the quarterback design run, a quarterback power. Both tight ends are pulling. The first one that arrives kicks out, and that's Cooper, and then McAuliffe is the next guy that gets up to that second level. Probably the fifth design quarterback run that we've seen this afternoon. On the ground, C.J. Davidson. He's twisted down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Pratt on the stop. You got a feel for this NC State defense. The Wolfpack offense has got three plays and out every time. They've been on the field for pretty much the entire first half, and you're starting to see some hands on the hips from NC State. And look at the numbers right there. NC State has really got nothing going. They're going the wrong direction. And Clemson, I think the addition of their run game to marry the pass game ability out of Watson that we've already seen, and they really have it rolling on this side of the ball offensively for Clemson. Watson throws up a fade, and that was nearly intercepted. 
Josh Jones on the coverage. Watson wanted Jermont Hopper. Yeah, Hopper was running to the corner, and he was actually beat to the corner by Josh Jones. The safety, once again, coming over the top. And I want you to notice the room up front in the end zone to the pylon. You have to drive the football there. You don't always get a corner to the back end zone or the back pylon. Drive the football to the front pylon and let your receiver, Cooper, go get it. Uh, third down, Watson again for the end zone. He wanted his tight end, J.J. McCullough. It's incomplete. Jermaine Pratt on the coverage and fourth down coming up for the Tigers. McCullough just running on a linebacker, actually a safety. There's room there and just off his fingertips. That's the difference between a tight end not being able to extend and lay out for that football as opposed to Mike Williams earlier when the quarterback Watson threw Williams open, the tight end McCullough couldn't do it on that play. 31-yard field goal attempt for Eamon Lakett. Six for 10 on the season. He's already missed from 48 in this game. This one from 31 splits the uprights and Clemson tacks on three more. All Tigers here in the first half, 31 zip. Matt Chick here in the studio. Coming up at halftime, Kevin Carter will have his first staff analysis of Clemson leading 31-0 on NC State. Cowbells clanging in Starkville earlier today and three top 10 teams right now on the ropes. We'll have some highlights. See you then. We look forward to it. Dave Doran wants to see something from the Wolfpack offense. NC State's offensive numbers coming into this game have been spectacular. This was a team that put up 520 yards and 41 points against Florida State last week. They haven't done anything against Clemson. In fact, they have negative total yards. NC State will start from its own 25-yard line. Matt Schick told you about three unbeatens in the top 10 on the ropes. Nebraska, not in the top 10, but an unbeaten team. In fact, the Huskers are the only unbeaten team in the Big Ten. They go to East Lansing to take on Michigan State. Nebraska has the nation's leading rusher in Amir Abdullah. Michigan State with a top five run defense. Should be a good one. Yeah, something's got to give there. That run defense for Michigan State is unreal. And Amir Abdullah, I think he's 5'8", and he is absolutely a dynamo. Clemson looked like they were going to bring pressure and then brought the guys back and Brissett throws it away, second and ten. Well, the statistical comparison has been much like the scoreboard, lopsided. Yeah, those negatives, they aren't a good thing over there on the left. And you can see the numbers, the first or the third downs for Clemson when they have a true freshman quarterback starting, but they're doing everything right offensively for Clemson. It's the run game, the pass game, and converting and moving the chains on third down. Brissett in trouble, dumps it off to Shadrach Thornton, and he has the Wolfpack's first, first down of the game. And it's on what they call the bang screen, and the, the running back goes up inside and turns quickly around in the, the motion outside and then the bang right inside where Thornton sets up just when that pass rush is getting to the quarterback. It's a quicker version kind of of the slip screen and very well executed by NC State right there. Thornton seven catches last week, ninth reception of the season. Thornton gets the call and he's close to midfield, a gain of six, and this is by far the Wolfpack's best drive of the game. And you see a little bit more of their offense because we've seen them sustain it a little bit longer, but the use of the jet sweep motion to try to change the eyes of the defense and create a better run fit matchup up inside. NC State wants to run power inside or inside zone, and they use that jet sweep to change the gap scheme for the defense. On second and four, Brissett under pressure. Dancing around into Clemson territory and then hit from behind by Grady Jarrett. It's a gain of 10, and NC State for the first time today in Clemson territory. And you're seeing a little bit of 
more of what NC State has been doing this season. A decent run game and then time and time again, Jacoby Brissett just bails him out and makes something out of nothing like he did on that play. At days into the game at running back. Clemson brings the heat. Percent just has to get rid of it. Second down and 10. I think defensive coordinator Brent Venables for Clemson feels very comfortable in those mixed down situations. First down can be run or pass, obviously, but he's bringing pressure because he likes his matchups outside in that press coverage. When you bring pressure, typically you're maybe one free, Safety in the middle of the field, but man across the board like we see right here and right here. Empty look. That's caught by Bo Hines, and that is NC State's leading receiver, his first catch of the game, and it's third down. Man, looks like we got five in the backfield there. Illegal formation on the offense, five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, second down. Denise, you got that exactly right. And we see Bo Hines right there, the true freshman. And typically, we'll find him in the slot. And that's exactly where North Carolina State needs to work it. If they can get time, they need to work that intermediate pass area, trying to force the linebackers for Clemson to cover guys like Bo Hines. And you see him right here in the slot. Second and long. Brissett throws on the run. That's tipped and knocked away by Jadar Johnson. And it's third and 15 for NC State. Yeah, Johnson matched up on Hines. And you can see the X release trying to create some separation. But very well defended by number 18, Johnson. If that ball would have been where it was supposed to be around the numbers, Johnson might be standing in the opposite end zone right now. The Wolfpack have yet to convert a third down. Three-man rush. And that's batted down by Crawford. Fourth down for NC State. NC State was expecting pressure and trying to throw the screen to the boundary side of the field. But one thing you cannot teach is length, and Corey Crawford has a bunch of that. You can see that wingspan. He's 6'5", has long arms, and he knocks that screen to the ground. You know, if Dave Dorn is asking the line judge right there if he has any ideas about how to get that offense rolling. Clemson's defense has been stout so far. The Wolfpack have struggled to move the ball. That was their best drive. It ends in a punt. Let's check in with Matt in the studio. Time now for our conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper and Hudson Mason to Chris Conley. Georgia making things look easy against Vanderbilt. They're up big right now, 21-0. And Florida State, number one team in all the land, in a dogfight against Wake Forest, 10-3. Guys? Florida State has not looked like the juggernaut they were a year ago. Not close. New quarterback for Clemson, Cole Stout, comes in with three minutes to go in the first half. Stout will just hand the ball off. It's Adam Choice. Flag back at the 11. We saw Cole Stout come into the game a week ago against UNC as well. You can see the, the holding call against Clemson, but I like the move. You know, it was his job to begin with. Holding offense, number 78. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Eric McLean whistled that time. And Cole Stout, I think it's just a way to get your backup quarterback now, which he is, just getting playing time. I like the move. Stout began the year, as you said, as the starter, replaced in the first half against Florida State, and that's when Deshaun Watson took off. And this Clemson offense took off on the delay. Choice right back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and long. And something to remember, the coaching staff, Chad Morris especially, reinforced the point to us last week. 
Stout didn't lose the job. Watson was just that much better and passed him. Yeah, and throughout the fall camp, really, Watson closed the gap. And then when you close the gap on the guy that's been here for three or four years, then that special talent, that skill set for Watson can take over. Choice again on the delay. And there's not much. Well, that was an incredibly conservative group of play calls in there with Cole Stout at the helm. It's third down coming now, but I think they will be conservative right here in a backed up situation. You obviously do not want to give NC State any breath of life at all. They've had none throughout the afternoon. NC State, if they can get a stop here with a chance for some good field possession or position before the half. Stout on third down, under pressure, hit as he throws it, and it's incomplete over the head of Mike Williams. So fourth and 15, and Clemson now will have to punt for the first time today. When NC State has had Clemson in passing situations, they could get pressure. It's those mixed down situations where it can be run or pass that NC State hasn't pressured Clemson's offense very well at all. Bradley Pinion, an outstanding punter, almost 45 yards per punt this season, will kick it away. Bo Hines waiting near midfield. Hines fields at the 46 of Clemson. Across the 45, still on his feet tackled outside the far hash at the 39-yard line of Clemson. College football continues tonight on ESPN at 7 p.m. LSU and Auburn. A true freshman for LSU, Brandon Harris, will make his first start. And then Utah and UCLA. The Bruins 10-1 against the Pac-12 South since Jim Mora took over as head coach. There is an injured player on the field at the 46-yard line. That looks like Ben Bolware, a backup linebacker. You can see Bolware right there at the top of the screen. Right there, he gets kicked right in the head by one of his own players. It's amazing some of the collisions that happen intentionally or not on special teams. And it's amazing that these guys don't stay down more often than they do. Paul a sophomore, was the top-ranked high school player out of the state of South Carolina at one point. His brother Garrett was a catcher on Clemson's baseball team and ended up being a 16th round draft choice of the Cincinnati Reds. It's 31-0, NC State on its last drive, had its most productive drive. It still ended in a punt, but they got 29 yards. They actually were able to move the ball. This is a chance to get something positive going into halftime. Yeah, that drive chart right there as a former quarterback just kind of almost makes me break out in a cold sweat. Best field position by far. We'll see if they can get something going right here. Off play action. Brissett steps up. He'll run. He won't get that far. Tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Second down. NC State has all three timeouts left. And a flag. Penalty on Deshaun Williams. And that's a break for NC State, 15 yards up. And Dave Doran just wants something positive to say going in at halftime. So if they can take advantage of this good field position aided right there by the personal foul face mask by 99 Williams, then at least he will have something positive to lead with. Brissett, the Florida transfer, under pressure. Hit as he throws it. He wanted Hines, and now a penalty. And this is going to be a hold on Wiggins. It was a double move by Bo Hines in that slot position. And as 
Hines went to the actually the outside fade. Wiggins just grabs his jersey. Pass interference if the ball was in the Holding air. Defense number 12. It's a 10-yard penalty. Automatic first down. In the North Carolina game last week, we saw Clemson defensively start to lose its focus once they built up a lead. A couple of costly penalties here at the end of the half, and that's clear as day. Yeah, that was a definite hold, and it was a hold or a pass interference just depending on whether the ball was in the air or not. It was ruled that the ball wasn't in the air there. Brissett will keep it, and then he stood up at the 15. No game. You know, that's one difference between, like, a Jacoby Brissett and a Jordan Lynch that we, that Dorn had at NIU is that suddenness in that run game. It's the same scheme, quarterback-heavy run game, but there's not that suddenness out of Brissett that you see out of a Lynch in the same type of X's and O's scheme. NC State uses its first timeout to stop the clock. What if I told you their jerseys at Boston College, but they were playing for someone else? In the late 70s, a small group of BC ballers got mixed up with the real good fellas and started shaving points. What if I told you that once the fix is in, it can't be fixed? ESPN Films 30 for 30 presents Playing for the Mob Tuesday at 9 p.m. on ESPN. That will be intriguing now. Well, Clemson's Vic Beasley has had some big games in his career against NC State. In fact, he had six sacks in his career against NC State coming into this game, and he needs one sack to tie the school's all-time record in that department. Michael Dean Perry and the late Gaines Adams share the mark with 28 sacks. And I know that number, that 27, is kind of the overall production number, but it's the effect that he has. You can see right there in his numbers versus NC State, but even when he doesn't get that tackle for loss or that sack, he gives the impression that he's around the quarterback, and also he makes the guys up front around him better. Second and 10, Brissett just two of 10 passing in the first half. Brissett under pressure, stops. There is a flag on the play as Brissett chucks it out of bounds. Deshaun Williams got to the quarterback. Let's see what the penalty is. Holding offense, number 74. 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. Right tackle Tyson Chandler, a three-year starter, whistled for the hold. Chandler's up right there, and the hold comes really late. You can see right there, he seems in good shape, but as Crawford tries to slide off late, you can see right there that Chandler turned him completely around with the hole. On second and 20, Brissett steps up, eludes the initial pursuit, and then tackled from behind by Stefan Anthony. It's third down and long. Brady Jarrett was there as well. And the Wolfpack used their second timeout, so one left. 43 seconds to go, third and 16. Are you content to play for three if you're NC State? I don't think you can be content down 31 to nothing and the first half is almost over. I think you got to go for it. You're talking about really two plays, and it sets up what you do on third and long if you're going to go for it on fourth anyway. I don't think three does you any good on the board going in at halftime. In fact, I think it's somewhat demoralizing even more because of where you inherited this football. Yeah, it's a catch-22. You try to play for seven, and if you don't get any, that's 31 nothing going into the locker room. If you get three, NC State gets the ball first. Maybe you can at least try to build on that, but I feel you. You look at the scoreboard, and you have to be at yeah. least thinking, we need six. And I think what Brissett is finding is there's a big difference between the front seven for Clemson right now that we're seeing on the field and what he faced against Florida State a week ago. You don't run away from this defensive front seven for Clemson. We saw last week Brissett making a lot of plays 
He looked kind of like the Superman at times. Absolutely, but he's not running away from this front seven here today. Play action. Clemson read it all the way. A sack by Beasley. There is a flag, but if the sack stands, Beasley will have tied the school's all-time record. Yeah, I think it's going to be on Beasley. Going up around the helmet in some form, it didn't look like he had the face mask. Personal foul. Grasping the helmet opening on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. And so they call Beasley getting up on the helmet. And he's going to be right here. He's inside. And actually, they just forget to block him. They moved Beasley inside to create a matchup on a guard, but he was matched up on no one. And you can see he gets underneath the back of the helmet, and that's essentially synonymous with a face mask. And that's an automatic first down, so third and long now becomes first and 10. And NC State, with 35 seconds and a timeout, has a chance to call a few more plays. Empty set, Brissett in trouble. Trying to get away from the pressure, throws on the run, checks down to Alston, and he's tackled inside the five at the two-yard line. Clock still rolling. And Beasley just continues to wreak havoc, and Brissett gets away this time. This is what Brissett was doing last week against Florida State. As you can see, Brissett right there kills it with only eight seconds left on the clock. Eight seconds, not very far to go. You got two plays here if you want it. Yeah, I think that's exactly the way NC State is looking at it. And with a timeout left, a run is on the table. Yeah, I think that's the important thing. You can run it here in play number one. I wouldn't recommend it against this defensive front. I think get Brissett out on the edge, preferably away from the guy we were just showing, number three, Beasley. Roll away from number three and try to give Brissett a run pass option outside the pocket. And how about that? The Wolfpack called for a delay of game after the spike. Yeah, and I don't know that that actually hurts them, ironically enough. I think more room, because I think they're throwing it twice anyway. So more room to maneuver your group of receivers in that end zone and get Brissett outside the pocket, try to get him away from that traffic. Underwood, the receiver to the top of your screen. Days in the backfield, play action. Brissett chased by Curse, heaves it out of bounds, and there's no time left. Dave Dorn is saying there should be a second left on the clock. And he's trying to plead his case. And it literally is going to be when this ball hits the ground. Beasley, or excuse me, Brissett throws the ball away. You can see the real speed down below. It actually didn't hit the ground. It hit about eight rows up, and it's a reviewable situation, but teams are already going to the locker room. It's been that kind of first half for NC State. Nothing went right. Meanwhile, Deshaun Watson, terrific so far. Two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. And Clemson has a 31-0 lead after 30 minutes of play. We talked so much about Deshaun Watson in this offense for Clemson, and I said, don't sleep on the defense. What an outing by this Clemson defense. It's been a complete effort so far from the Tigers. Time now for the halftime report. Matt Schick and Kevin Carter waiting in the studio. Thank you, Anish and Kelly. In the last 10 years, you've just witnessed history. The last 10 years, NC State now has its fewest total yards in a first half of play. 125 years ago, Thomas Green Clemson established Clemson University to make a difference. As Clemson students, faculty, staff, and alumni, this is still our charge. To find new sources of energy, to create better medical implants, to build greener and safer cars, to power big ideas and big research. 
to teach, to learn, to serve, to win. Today, Mr. Clemson would be proud of the difference Tigers make every day. Deshaun Watson, the truth. Oh, he's fantastic. So is Mike Williams. Touchdown, 56 yards. Clemson rolling on NC State at half. Really changing, learning a lot about college football. Maybe this week, more than any week so far this season. We've learned Deshaun Watson is very talented. Mike Williams can grab touchdowns. Clemson up 31-0. They're very good. Here against Texas, a game Baylor did go on to win. Clemson looks like they're going on to win this one. Deshaun Watson, one of his four total touchdowns in this one. Yeah, dust yourself off, sir. Clemson rolling. Second half coming up. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. About ready for the start of the third quarter in Death Valley, and it was all Clemson in the first 30 minutes. The Tigers with a 31-0 lead after two quarters. And he's Shroff alongside former first-round pick Kelly Stauffer. Wow, you look at that first half. We wondered, could Deshaun Watson possibly be better than last week? Well, in the running game, he was. And Clemson's defense has just stymied what was the best offense statistically in the ACC entering play. As good as Deshaun Watson was in that first half, the story for me is that NC State's offense came in playing really well into this game. Clemson's defense has been absolutely lights out. Let's take a look at the Taco Bell game track. Watson, two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns in that first and half. And I thought early he was great. Late he got a little greedy. He found Mike Williams a couple of times early, and then I think he needs to find his checkdowns later. But what a swarming, smothering defense. Ed, edge pressure and a bunch of talent inside that did not give Brissett any time to operate. NC State averages more than 500 yards of total offense per game. The Wolfpack held to 38 yards on 28 plays in the first half. Now on the last drive for NC State, before the half, the Wolfpack had a chance. Jacoby Brissett, nice check down here to Shadrach Thornton, but then on the very next play after the spike, NC State whistled for a delay of game, and this was maybe a controversial play. Time runs out on the Wolfpack, but it looks like there should be a second on the clock when that throw goes into the stands. Yeah, I think head coach Dave Dorn was exactly right. He was arguing with the officials there should be one second, and I think he's right. Hitting anything out of bounds, in that case it was a fan, they should have had time to run one more play or kick a field goal. Here's Tony Creasy with a big hole on first down, and Creasy with NC State's longest run of the game. He's to the 43-yard line. So, Anish, what do they do in the second half? They do what they're made to do, establish the run, go up-tempo, and then your quarterback has to create plays. Back to Creasy on second down, or rather first down. And Creasy close to midfield, tackled by Corinne Wiggins. This is also a rhythm offense that could not get into a rhythm in the first half. Yeah, they didn't extend any drives. They were over on third down. You can't go up tempo when you're not converting. Once more to Creasy. And he gets to midfield, a gain of two, third and short. The other side of the coin is Clemson's defense in the second half against UNC last week really upset their defensive coordinator, Britton Venables, and their head coach, Dabo Sweeney, because both of them thought that this defensive group lost focus. Look for where their focus is here in the second half is already NC State is showing a little more spunk than they did in the first half. Empty backfield. Brissett gets rid of it. Incomplete fourth down coming up. The tight end Greenwich was the intended target. And the quarterback Brissett was trying to get his tight end Greenwich to set down in that void. And the tight end moved a little bit further upfield, and the throw was low and behind the tight end on that play. With the pressure Clemson has been bringing, it's been tough for Brissett to get comfortable back there. If you have zero run game you have zero shot of getting passes off in third down passing situations bomb and bobbled the snap Humphreys signals for a fair catch gets hit 
A flag comes in. Fair catch signal was made. And that's going to be a penalty on NC State. Unless NC State's player was blocked into the that's receiver. True. And that's that true. may have happened, actually. I think Kellen Jones, number 52, the backup linebacker for Clemson, was blocking the NC State player into the receiver. This flag, actually, I think should be picked up. I think you're right. I really like how the officials discuss this and get to the right conclusion. I like the way they work together. And I go back to the play before halftime. That could have been reviewed with time left. That was a situation where yeah, they didn't that, feel the need to. Yeah, that was to. a little mind-boggling. I mean, it's 31 to nothing. We're only talking about potentially a field goal try that would give NC State three, but that's the way the game's played. During the kick, illegal block in the back, number 13 of the receiving team. The player who was blocked in the back touched the ball, but it was forced touching. Therefore, the ball was down by NC State at the 16-yard line. That penalty for the legal block in the back will be half the distance. First down, Clemson. I think they got the player's number wrong because 13 is the return man, Adam Humphreys. There's no way that could have been Humphreys. Humphreys was the guy trying to make the catch. Yeah, it's 52. They got the wrong player, yeah, Kellen Jones. You're exactly right. Kellen Jones and actually knocked the NC State player into Humphreys. I believe it was the right call penalty wise, but it certainly wasn't going to be on any NC State player for hitting Humphrey in kick catch interference early on that play. Cole Stout got Clemson's last series of the first half. Watson in for the start of the third quarter. And it's Wayne Gallman, the freshman, with a gain of four. Now, this has not been close. Deshaun Watson, 12 of 20, 182 yards. He's thrown two touchdown passes, both to Mike Williams, and he's run for two more. Watson steps up. Another shot downfield. He wants Jermon Hopper, and it's incomplete and a penalty. Hopper was covered by Dravius Wright, the nickelback. A lot of contact down there. Yeah, this is certainly going to be on Wright. It was slightly underthrown. Interference, defense number eight, personal foul, face mask, offense number 79. Those penalties will all set. Replay second down. Penalty is on Isaiah Battle for Clemson. Yeah, Isaiah Battle goes to the face mask, but this is the penalty at the other end. That was right with the pass interference. As you see at the top of the screen, 79 Battle certainly has his left hand grabbing the face mask of the NC State edge rusher. Clemson came into the game with only 11 penalties on the season, fewest in the FBS, six so far. Second down, Watson under pressure, and he's sacked. Taken down by B.J. Hill. And we saw this in the second quarter that NC State was getting better pressure on Watson when they were comfortable with the fact that he was going to throw the ball. B.J. Hill on that play, but we saw it through blitzes and just rushing four in that second quarter in the first half. Third down, Watson in trouble again. Rolling to his right, throws on the run, leg it open near sideline, and he hauls it in for a Clemson first down, a gain of 19. This is an aspect of Watson's game that is impressive as well. Keeping your head down the field, he finds leg it on the sideline, ball possession, his left foot was in bounds, but it's the ability for the true freshman quarterback to keep the play alive and keep his focus downfield. 
C.J. Davidson fighting for yards gets three tackled by Fernandez second and seven. Watson gets rid of it over the middle to Williams and Mike Williams in NC State territory brought down by Jack Tocho. Williams set a career high in receiving yards last week. He's already topped that this week. And Mike Williams running a really nice route, but watch the pressure in the pocket. The pressure was a little bit late, didn't affect the throw, but nonetheless, NC State once again is getting to Watson just a little bit too late. Gallman gets the edge across the 40. And burst of speed. That gets him to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of eight by Wayne Gallman. You know, Anish, we just saw that pressure on Watson. That's the thing that I noticed about Watson last week against UNC is that he just doesn't see the pressure up front, which is a good thing. He has his focus down the field, and he just doesn't see or feel that pressure getting into him. See the show of pressure up here by NC State once again as Clemson is driving the football. Watson with time, checks down to Gallman, and he picks up a Clemson first down. It's a gain of nine. Chad Morris told us yesterday the best plays that Watson made last week against North Carolina were the checkdowns when he went through the progressions. Yeah, and the way Chad Morris puts it is he told his young quarterback, you never go broke taking a profit. Hit your checkdowns if nothing is down the field. Great option. And Watson gobbled up for a loss of a yard. Rodman Noel in on the stop. And Anish, if I can nitpick a little bit in Watson's first half performance, it was just that. I thought late in the second quarter, he was getting a little bit greedy. He had the good matchups down the field, but his guys were open, but he was still throwing the football and forgetting about the check down game. Watson, there's the check down game, but the throw a little behind Gallman. Yeah, check down game good, accuracy game not so good on this play. Nothing is down the field. Throw it. Running backs and tight ends. They're really good passing teams. Throw it sometimes 70% of the time to running backs and tight ends in that check down situation. You obviously have to throw it more accurately than Watson did on that play. Third and long, Williams, 155 yards receiving, lined up at the top of your screen. Watson. And that is incomplete, intended for J.J. McCullough. Fourth down coming up. I really like the way NC State has played on the back end. Kind of midway through the second quarter, it seems like they made adjustments. They're doing a better job of route reading and covering guys, especially vertical guys, as we saw on that play. Eamon Lankip will come on for a field goal. He has hit one today, made one from 31, missed from 48. And this is a 43-yarder. Kick is up, and it's good. Clemson tacks on three on its first drive of the second half. 34-0 Tigers. Will us, champ. Thrill. Thanks, man. Will Muschamp can breathe easy, Ooh. but barely. That's a throwback SEC game at 10 to 9. I thought those days were gone forever. Tell you what, that hot seat continuing to get hotter for Will Muschamp. Florida still struggling offensively. 34 0 Clemson on top of NC State, 9.31 to go here in the third quarter. Heyman Lake up a couple of field goals. Deshaun Watson has accounted for four touchdowns, two with his feet, two with his arm for the Tigers scoring. 
Celebrating its 10th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3.4 million in scholarship funds. This NC State offense came in having scored at least 40 points in each of its last four games. The first time in school history the Pack had done that. You saw what they did against Florida State last week, 520 total yards. They have not gotten it going against this Clemson defense. Underwood in motion, play action. Brissett has it taken away by Beasley, and he's going to run into the end zone. How many times did Vic Beasley get close to Jacoby Brissett in the first half? And this time, he doesn't even get the sack. He just goes right for the, the fumble and the score. What a tremendous player. Dabo Sweeney, that guy's not going to be around here much longer. He could have gone pro after last season and would have had a chance to be a first round pick. He came back to get a sociology degree. He wanted to be the first guy from his family to graduate with a college degree. And when we talked to Brent Venables about Beasley last week, they told us this kid has come a long way since he first set foot on campus. The All-American with a strip and then the score, all Clemson. That last play officially goes down as a sack, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery that was returned for a touchdown. So Vic Beasley gets his 28th career sacks, and he's now tied with Gaines Adams and Michael Dean Perry for most in school history. Yeah, he pretty much did everything on that play, and I inadvertently said it wasn't a sack because it was such a clean fumble recovery and a touchdown, but what a special player. Meanwhile, we told you, 28 career sacks tied for first in Clemson history. A quarter of those sacks have come against NC State, and he's now forced to fumble in three straight games against the Wolfpack. They'll be happy to see him move on. Yeah, no doubt. And he was incredibly disruptive in the first half. He just did. He got one cat credit for one quarterback hurry in the first half, but he was constantly pressuring the set, not only in in the pass game, but also in the run game. The Wolfpack averaging less than two yards per play on first down. Nice run that time by Shadrach Thornton. He picks up a dozen. And the Wolfpack able to move the chains. And what you would think NC State would do here is continue with their game plan. I know they're down by 41, but if you just start dropping back and throwing the football every down against this defense, you'll get 80 hung on you in a heartbeat. Thornton again. And he stood up after a gain of a yard. Shaq Lawson on the stop. Lawson along with the safety at Robert Smith, number 27, kind of filling that alley. Doing a very good job in run support. And that's what I say about this defense. They're really good up front, obviously, led by Beasley. But on the back end, they're also very good. Robert Smith, Curse as well. Two corners that can cover in Peters and Alexander. Every level, these guys have production. Austin in motion. They fake the fly sweep to him. Brissett steps up. Nobody open. He'll try to take off. And he gets right back to the line of scrimmage. Third and long. Stefan Anthony and Grady Jarrett were there to greet him. See, Anish, this is what quarterbacks start to feel even when there really isn't pressure. Brissett shouldn't have gone anywhere on this play. There wasn't all that much pressure. You can see the jet sweep pretty well protected up front. There isn't any need to bail right there. There isn't any separation down the field, but the clock hadn't run out in the pocket. That's That was caused by prior pressure, namely number three, Beasley. 
Third downs have been a black hole for NC State. Three-man rush. Over the middle, incomplete. Stefan Anthony had a chance for it. Marquez Valdez Scantling, the intended target. And the Wolfpack will have to punt it. Kelly, what do you make of NC State? The first four games, the competition wasn't the best. The Wolfpack looked like they were an improved team. And if there were doubters, even in the loss to Florida State, you walked away saying, OK, this is a different NC State team. And then you look at what happened today. What do you make of the Wolfpack? Best defense, I think, in the country is what we're seeing right now really? with Clemson. Absolutely. Nationally. Nationally. Better than Michigan State. I think all the way around on every level, absolutely. 56-yard punt, no return. Clemson football when we come back. ESPN is your home of the new college football playoff. Tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU, Texas Tech visits Kansas State. Red Raiders quarterback Davis Webb will be a game-time decision for Cliff Kingsbury. Clemson will start backed up. D.J. Howard in the game at running back. And Howard gets the call on first down. Bounces to the outside and wrapped up inside the 15 by Josh Jones. It's a gain of seven. And Howard getting outside on the power play to the edge. In 77, Reed Webster was pulling around the edge to lead the running back. That is quintessential Chad Morris offense. Set it up with the power run game. We saw the quarterback power run game in the first half. I don't know that we'll see a lot of that here in the second half. Up 41 to nothing. Howard again follows his blocker. And takes it across the 15 to the 16 yard line. It's a game of four. The same thing there. That time it was tight end J.J. McCullough pulling and kicking out the defensive end. And good patience by the running back jumping up inside late. How long do you leave Watson in in a 41 to nothing game? Good question. Game? Here's Howard once more. And he pushes the pile to the 25-yard line. It's a gain of six. You certainly don't want to risk injury. You have a capable backup in Cole Stout. And in, on one hand, you want to give Watson all the experience that he can get, but yet he's probably going to be in the game handing the ball off a lot at this point in time. Hopper lined up in the slot. He's now in motion. And Watson hands it off again. It's Howard again. Breaks free. He's got a first down to the 35-yard line. Brought down by Wright. It's a gain of 11. We knew that Clemson wanted to get their run game going. And this is the big guys up front. You can see Ryan, the center, pulling. The tight end getting the round there as well. Number 89, McCullough. That power run game. You know, pull the uncoveds up front and relocate them somewhere else. And then Howard doing a nice job of finding some room. Howard, the most experienced running back on Clemson, didn't play much in the first half. Hopper goes up and brings that one down in front of Jones. And Clemson in NC State territory, a gain of 29. Yeah, Humphreys goes inside and Hopper goes outside. Hopper's watching the ball, and the defender, Josh Jones, is not. Very good job by Hopper in turning and making a play, kind of high-pointing that ball at the end. Sam Cooper in the game at tight end for Clemson. He had not played this season, broke his fibula before the Georgia game, actually during warm-ups. Watson chucks it downfield. And incomplete, a little too far in front of Damari Kitt. I don't mind that throw, though, and... Watson took a little heat at the end once again. See if he gets hit in the hand. You can see the pressure by Mike Rose coming off the left defensive end position. And Watson looked like he was checking that hand when he got up. 
good news is it might be the left hand not his throwing hand which would be the right. On second and ten Watson quarterback keeper nowhere to go and he just goes down for a big loss third and long. Well, how about this Deshaun Watson has now set a Clemson record most passing yards by a Tiger quarterback in their first two games. Charlie Whitehurst was a pretty good one here at Clemson in the early 2000s. This passing situation right here certainly a passing down NC State has been getting pressure on Watson you would think some type of a screen game right here. Here's the blitz there's the screen Williams punished and now a late flag ball was incomplete. I wonder if this is going to be targeting. That was Pittman on the hit on Mike Williams trying to get inside on that tunnel screen and blockers were coming out and in that hold territory and that's what we're going to get. It's actually going to be a defensive holding. Forcible contact is the key phrase these days with targeting and that really good. I mean that could have been targeting by Pittman that Holding throw was hot or a hit was hot. It's a 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. The pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. Therefore third down. See what they're calling there is you can't hold a receiver if the ball crosses the line of scrimmage and they're saying that that ball did. And that's why it's not an automatic first down as it normally would be for defensive holding. And I think Pittman in further look right there as we saw in that replay I think it was a clean hit he kept his helmet out of the way Watson pressured again escapes the initial pressure scrambles for a first down and slides down at the 25 a gain of six. Typically when a quarterback uses his feet and that's pressure up inside it's it's usually a good decision. And Fernandez the linebacker was coming up in pressure inside and Watson avoids him and gets positive yards. Here's choice bounces to the outside. Tackled at the 20 and a flag back of the 25. Holding offense number 68 10 yard penalty first down. Eric McLean again he's a backup guard pressed into the rotation this week. It might have been it was say 68 or 78 David Beasley 68 I think is who they flagged there. But you're right Macklin is the seventh guy. <laughs> they they're very thin up front and Macklin is the next guard in but that time I think number 68 David Beasley got called for that hole. And Joe Gore one of the backup linemen out this week after he had his appendix removed. Howard breaks one tackle and then devoured right at the line of scrimmage by a host of white shirts. And he's what Dabo Sweeney told us is he wants to see his team play four quarters. It's been a little sloppy here in the second half except for Vic Beasley and taking that one into the end zone. But offensively they're just kind of mushing around up front. The offensive line is a question mark for this team. No question about that. Watson over the middle he's got McCullough and McCullough back to the original line of scrimmage and more laundry a flag down back at the 35. I think we're going to get a chop block inside. Personal foul chop block number 58 and number 67 of the offense 15 yard penalty second down. So they got Ryan Norton and Kalen Davis and I don't think it could have been Davis Davis is at a right tackle what I saw was 58 and 68. There's 67. Yeah it was inside it was 68 David Beasley and Ryan Norton and basically the chop block is one offensive line lineman has the defender engaged and the other one comes in low. So eight penalties today for Clemson they had just 11 all season entering the contest. Pressure again screen pass kick gets a couple third and long. 
is take a look inside. It starts with Ryan. It's actually 77 Webster and 58 Ryan Norton. One had him engaged, and then the other one, in this case, Ryan Norton, came in low. That's the definition of a chop block. Very dangerous. Third and 33. Less than two minutes to go here in this third quarter. All Clemson so far. Watson steps up over the middle, and that is nearly intercepted. Josh Jones had it, but dropped it. And Watson actually had Artavia Scott on the dig route. The post route had cleared out the safety, and Scott is open. And as the young quarterback, Deshaun Watson, slid up in the pocket, he just didn't get his feet set. And when a quarterback doesn't get his front foot set, sometimes that's the result. The ball is sailed high. Scott was open and probably would have converted that third and extremely long. Bo Hines back deep. Will Bauman on to punt it away, or rather uh, Bradley Pinion on to punt it away. Hines waiting at his own 10-yard line. Fair catch signal. And Hines makes it at his own 8-yard line. Pinion so good at pinning the opposition inside the 20. He does it again there. Tonight on ABC, 19th ranked and unbeaten Nebraska takes on 10th ranked Michigan State. The Huskers, the only unbeaten left in the Big Ten. Nebraska with a top five rushing offense nationally. Michigan State, a top five rushing defense nationally. A partner here thinks Clemson's got the best overall defense nationally. Days will get forward progress and he gets about a yard. What is it about this Clemson defense that you like so much? Talent at every level. It starts with dynamic pass rushers. Chief among them is number three, Vic Beasley. But then they have Grady Jarrett, a three technique that just destroys people. They have second level defenders, the middle linebacker Anthony, and then they're talented on the back end in coverage as well. Three levels of production and talent. Brissett rolls to his left, completes to Brian Underwood, and Underwood forced out of bounds by Curse, third down. I mean, it starts with those guys right there. You look at the starts up front, the production and the experience, and then that translates into the second level defenders being better because those guys are occupying everyone up front. And then on the back end, I think they've been very sound in coverage. And then you, Anish, marry all of that together with Brent Venables, who I think is one of the best defensive minds in the country. On third and short, Shadrach Thornton gets a first down for NC State. <laughs> And that is the first third down conversion all day for the Wolfpack. And that appears to be the final play of the third quarter. NC State came into this game as the most prolific offense in the ACC. This Clemson D has held the Wolfpack to just 79 yards through three quarters. This has to be befuddling for Dave Doran, the NC State head coach. His offense racked up 520 yards last week against Florida State. Today, they're averaging less than two yards per play against Clemson. On first down and 10, that's Shadrach Thornton. The ball pops loose. It's picked up by B.J. Goodson. Goodson still on his feet. Goodson inside the 20 gets a block and finally brought down by Thornton at the 10-yard line, the third turnover for the Wolfpack. Even when NC State gets a little room, in this case, they cough it up. And 
Goodson is opportunistic in that sense, but this is what we've seen today. I think there are, there's pressure at every level out of this Clemson defense, and I think this is what makes them special. They pressure up front. They're opportunistic on the back end in coverage, and then their linebacking level knows how to clean things up. I stand by that. I think this is the best defense in the country. We may have seen the last of Deshaun Watson for the afternoon. Cole Stout into the game. Hands it off to Wayne Gallman, and he runs into a roadblock after a pickup of a yard. The last time NC State was shut out, October 29th, 2011, that was a 34 0 loss in Tallahassee to Florida State. Scott in motion. Stout, quarterback draw, got a block from Gallman. And Stout springs ahead to the five yard line, a gain of five. Third and goal. And the quarterback lead draw looks a little bit different with Cole Stout in the game versus Deshaun Watson. We saw Watson successfully run that play in the first half, and then Cole Stout there. Not nearly as fleet footed as Sean Watson is. Two tight ends. On the ground, this is Gallman. Tries to turn inside, and the ball pops loose. Was Gallman down? He was. Fourth down coming up for Clemson. And you could see the line judge right there at the bottom of the screen showing that Gallman was down by holding up, that it was going to change downs. and. I think that's a good call. Certainly nothing there on the screen that we could see would reverse that. Well, the offense is out on the field on fourth and goal with the score 41 nothing. Do you agree with this? You're going to be chastised whatever you do. You kick a field goal up 41 to nothing, and people are probably going to say the same thing. Gallman runs it up the middle, turnover on downs, and NC State will take over. And maybe that was the thought, turnover on downs. Make the defense stop us, and worst case scenario, we just turn it over deep in their territory. NC State football when we come back, 12.41 to go in this one. A journey to the next great championship in sports. ESPN, home of the new college football playoff. New Year's will never be the same. Deshaun Watson's day appears to be done. 267 yards, two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. He wears number four, a number that's retired at Clemson. The great Steve Fuller wore number four in the 1970s, but Fuller allowed his number to come out of retirement so Watson can wear it, and Watson certainly is living up to the legacy of Fuller. Jacoby Brissett will chuck this one out of bounds. It was in the direction of Tyler Purvis. Well, Brissett transferred to NC State from Florida. The Wolfpack last year really did not have a set piece of quarterback. Brandon Mitchell, Pete Thomas both struggled. But Dave Doran knew before last season started that Brissett was going to be his guy in 2014. Brissett had to sit out last season for NCAA transfer rules. On second down. It's a handoff, and that's Creasy, and he picks up 11. It's a first down for NC State. You look at Brissett, what he had done up until this point, he had been statistically the best quarterback in the ACC coming into today. Now, this afternoon, it's been a disaster. Four out of 15, 35 yards. And it's been a disaster because I, we've talked about Clemson's defense, but Brissett coming into this game has played at probably one of the best quarterback levels in all the country leading up to today. He's been spectacular. Tracy attacks the middle, gets a yard, second and nine. Carlos Watkins on the stop. 
You know, Beninish, outside of the Florida State game a week ago where he was spectacular, Jacoby Brissett was. They haven't really played anybody, and I think this defense was their first or their next really true test. I think obviously Florida State knows how to play defense, but they don't know how to play defense right now like the defense that they were facing today, and Brissett just couldn't get loose in any form of the game. The NC State coaches told us, with all due respect to Florida State, Clemson, the best front four they've seen. Wildcat here. And Creasy takes a big hit at the 20 yard line by TJ Green. Tony Creasy with a carry. It's a gain of five. Third down coming up. And to my recollection, that's the first time that we saw the Wildcat today as well. We saw that prominently used last week especially in the first half against Florida State, but NC State elected not to go to it much today. Tough to mix things up when you're constantly in second and long, third and long, and you can't get first downs, which was really the story of the first half. And therefore, you can't go up-tempo, which was a big part of the game plan coming into today. On third down, Brissett in trouble, spins away, and ends up gaining a yard. It could have been a lot worse. Fourth down for NC State. He's not the quickest guy, but he's strong. He's physical. And he's got pretty good escapability for a guy his size. Yeah, and Tankersley, you can see right there, number 25. It's just a corner fire off the boundary side. And that's actually a lot of times where the boundary corner is fired from. You have to see that. That's right in your wheelhouse. And Burdett, Brissett didn't see it, but man, did he avoid it pretty well. Jermon Hopper, the deep man for Clemson. Adam Humphreys, the normal punt returner. Hopper fields inside his own 25-yard line, trying to find some real estate. There's a flag on the play. Back at the 18-yard line, Hopper tackled at the 33. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 29. That's a 10-yard penalty, first down. 9.41 to go in regulation. Clemson up 41-0. We're back after this. With Kelly Stauffer and Ishraf, it's time for our Buick Drive recap. This was what led to Clemson's last offensive touchdown. A fumble recovered by Corey Crawford and then Deshaun Watson. Takes it in from about five yards out, his second rushing touchdown of the game. 41-0, Clemson has tacked down another field goal since then, and also a defensive touchdown courtesy of Vic Beasley. Adam Choice gets the call on first down. New quarterback into the game for Clemson. It's the third stringer, the redshirt sophomore from Grayson, Georgia, Nick Schusler. Schusler was a high school teammate of a guy heavily recruited and once committed to Clemson, Robert Kimdichie, who ended up at Ole Miss. And if you remember, Kimdichie was the number one player coming out of high school a season ago. Schusler has attempted two passes this season. He's completed both of them, and both came in a blowout win against South Carolina State. That's choice again. He's to the 16-yard line, about three yards shy of the first down marker, third down. And Anish, we're seeing massive substitutions by Dabo Sweeney currently, and it's actually a core philosophy of his. He wants to get as many kids into the game, especially home games when you can have more players on the sideline. He says for a lot of these kids, that's their own little reward for the sweat equity they have in our program. And I think it's what sets Dabo Sweeney apart from a lot of coaches in this country. Hand off to Choice, second level, he breaks free. Choice still on his feet and out of bounds. They mark him out at midfield. Choice, another one of those true freshmen, those youngsters offensively that are getting quality time. Very well blocked up front, and then Choice bounces it outside. 
215. He's kind of a fire plug type of guy, but showed some speed to the edge. You mentioned getting guys in. The receiver lined up in the slot, bottom of your screen, Daniel Rodriguez. He's been featured on game day. A Purple Heart winner for his efforts overseas. He's 26 years old at Clemson on the GI Bill and really one of the feel good stories in college football. And for all of the superstars we have in the game, we have a lot more guys that just are here for an opportunity to get out there once in a while. I mean, that's really the heart and soul of what college football is about. Rodriguez's story is, is a completely different level, but what a great re reward for that young man as well. Uh, he was honored for his bravery during the Battle of Kamdesh in Afghanistan as choice gets to the 44-yard line. As he was going through that time in Afghanistan, you think it ever crossed his mind that he would be on the field here playing in a game like this? His story has been well documented, not just by ESPN, but a number of networks over the last couple of years since he's been at Clemson. And we would like here. to see a guy like that getting a shot and yeah. getting to play, even if it's mop-up time. We were here last year and they were trying to get him in the end zone. I remember they, that. They tried really hard to do it. Never got it accomplished. No gain for choice. You know, it's interesting because when Brent Venables came in for his interview process for the D coordinator position, one thing that drew him to Dabo Sweeney was this philosophy. He didn't even really know how to define it until he was on hand. And then he said, you know what? This is what I see in the program. These kids are different. The chemistry and the morale on the team is different than a lot of places because of the way Dabo Sweeney treats them and wants him to get rewarded for playing time. That's the way it should be done. That was a big reason Cole Stout was the guy coming out of camp. There was a sense of loyalty to a guy who had spent three years as Taj Boyd's understudy. We need more of that in this game today. Some coaches have lost track of that way of thinking. Pinion pins NC State inside the 20, a 33-yard punt. Wolfpack ball when we come back. Go in the third, and he. TCU looking to spring an upset, and all of a sudden, if the Horned Frogs can knock off Oklahoma, you got to start talking about TCU as a potential threat in the Big 12 and maybe somebody to look at when you're talking 14 playoff. Pass incomplete intended for Marquez Valdez Scantling. TCU visits Baylor next week. Baylor taking on Texas. Speaking of the Big 12, at the top of the hour here on ESPNU, it's Texas Tech and Kansas State. We'll get you to Sports Center U before that game. And the big question mark for the Red Raiders, will Davis Webb play? He injured his non-throwing shoulder last Thursday against Oklahoma State. And Texas Tech has said he's a game-time decision. Brissett hands it off and days to the 15-yard line. Jacoby Brissett, as we mentioned earlier, transferred to NC State from Florida, had to sit a year. He was actually recruited by Dave Doran when Doran was an assistant at Wisconsin. That was back in 2011. The reason Brissett didn't go to Wisconsin, he considered the Badgers strongly. Wisconsin ended up getting a graduate transfer to come to Madison by way of NC State. That guy ended up being pretty good. Won a Super Bowl last year. Oh, that guy. That guy, yeah. Brissett rolls out, scrambles out of bounds at the 20-yard line, and it looks like they're going to give him just enough for the first down. But Brissett made his way back into uh, Dave Doran's camp, if you will. And I think he... Brissett is in a really good place, to be honest with you. First of all, it's exactly what North Carolina State needed at that position. But Brissett also needed a home. He wasn't mm -hmm. getting it done after Charlie Weiss left Florida. And I think he has a home now and has played extremely well coming into today. 
Days breaks a tackle, gets to the 27-yard line. You know, if you're Florida, Jeff Driscoll was the number one quarterback in his high school class. And I know Gator fans are looking around the country. Today, notwithstanding, Brissett has had a very good season for NC State. Tyler Murphy had a monster game against USC when BC scored the upset. Both Murphy and Brissett have played well in the ACC, both Florida transfers. And if you want to bring it full circle, this is a stretch to connect the dots, but Deshaun Watson, also from Gainesville, Gainesville, Georgia, but Yeah, still Gainesville. I'm with you. I followed you all the way around the world right there. <laughs> 41-0. Brissett with a couple of nice broken tackles, and he picks up a first down for the Wolfpack. And meanwhile, Dave Dorn is, I think, getting the pieces in place in this program. And this is what Brissett has done so well this year. It's not just breaking contain, but it's continuing to get yards after contact as a quarterback out of the pocket. That's pretty impressive stuff, but Dave Dorn wants a physical run game and a quarterback that can do a, more than just manage things, be figured into the run game, but hit the right guy in the pass game, and Brissett has done that this year most of the time. Braylon Cherry gets it on the jet sweep, shakes off T.J. Green, but they say he stepped out of bounds at the 43-yard line. The other thing with Brissett, we said this at the top of the broadcast, he brought stability not just to this offense but to this team when we asked Dave Doran this week what has been the trickle down effect of finally having a quarterback he said everything oh yeah he said it's his play is lifting our team we talked about you know improvement defensively and in the run game and offensive line of scrimmage and he said that guy has lifted our entire team and watching him on tape through this part of the season you can't really argue with that. Timeout Clemson with 2.22 to go. The Tigers looking to put the ribbon and wrapping paper on this one. All right, thank you, Matt. 2.22 to go here in regulation. Clemson has this one comfortably in hand. 41-0, Jacoby Brissett and NC State trying to get on the board as the Wolfpack look to avoid their first shutout since 2011. Brissett was told before the start of last season he would be the starter this year for NC State, and Dave Doran issued a challenge to him. Doran told him last year, can you be a leader on this team without ever taking a snap in a meaningful game? You're going to be on the practice squad, but can you get comfortable in the locker room? Can you be a leader without actually playing? And Brissett embraced that challenge last year. This was a kid who drove to all but one of NC State's road games, and he did it on his own dime. Yeah, that's amazing, except for one road game, just to be there supporting his teammates. And then he had to be the quarterback of scout, the scout team. That's not easy to do either, especially when you're an established guy that's destined to be the starter. And Dave Doran told him, what I want you to do is one thing every day in practice. From scout team quarterback, I want you to wreck our defense put pride in wrecking our defense and that's exactly what Dave Dorn got out of number 12 percent right there. Dave Dorn wants to go quickly time running out 41 nothing Clemson's last shutout against an ACC team back in 1998 it was a 23 nothing win against Maryland. Texas Tech, Kansas State tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPNU. Sports Center U follows our broadcast and they'll get you to Manhattan for the start of that game. Again, Red Raider quarterback Davis Webb. Questionable. He's a game time decision with an injured non throwing shoulder. Clemson started the season one and two. Lost a heartbreaker at Florida State, bounced back strong against UNC last week, and has looked terrific today against NC State. Deshaun Watson and Mike Williams have been the two biggest stars yeah, in that little run. That's the combination right there. The last two weeks with Watson getting his first start against UNC and his second one here today, combined with Williams, 91 points, over 1,000 yards in those two games. Since the start of 2012, Clemson is 0-3 against Florida State, undefeated against everyone else in the ACC. Yeah, Watson needs to become 
better friends with that guy right there, Williams, number seven. He's that big-bodied receiver that Clemson has been known for. And he's a matchup nightmare. And right now, there's pretty good chemistry developing between Watson and Williams. Percent working against mostly second teamers, uses the stiff arm, and then wrestle to the ground. Dorno Daniel. Clemson's upcoming schedule, Louisville next week right here in Death Valley, then a road game at Boston College, back home for Syracuse at Wake, at Georgia Tech, home against Georgia State. With no disrespect to all those teams Clemson plays before South Carolina, maybe with the exception of Louisville, Clemson should have its way with everybody else there. It's that defense with Louisville. We saw it last night on television against Syracuse, but it's that Charlie Strong recruited defense that's still on the field for Petrino. And they're playing really well. They lost a lot of productivity, but playing well. Deshaun Watson is going to have his work cut out for him next week. And you know what? This Clemson defense might have its work cut out as well. Louisville could get its quarterback, Will Gardner, back. And probably most importantly, Devontae Parker, who's a future first-round pick, one of the best wide receivers in the nation. Parker hasn't played this season with a foot injury. He could be back next yeah. week. And this is, I think, next week is the week they were certainly hoping for Parker to be back. But you're right. Petrino offensively hasn't really looked like themselves. They've been kind of a ground and pound, ace formation, double tights, and run the football. But it's because they have zero experience at quarterback, and their playmaking wide receiver Parker hasn't played yet. Brissett under pressure, chased by Goodson. Gets rid of it and throws it away. Fourth down and four. This crowd, you can tell, the few that are, uh, I shouldn't say few, there's still a decent number of people who haven't gone to their cars. They want the shutout. And Goodson was doing a great job of tracking down Brissett, and I think that's what we saw today. Brissett got away from Florida State's defense time and time again. He didn't get loose at all here today against this Clemson defense. You do the math. And his wide receivers could not get much separation either. Daniel Rodriguez gets the applause. He's the deep man on the punt return for Clemson. We mentioned earlier he's a Purple Heart winner in timeout Tigers. <laughs> NC State last year started 3-1, and one, then lost its final eight games. They already have more wins than they did a season ago. For the Wolfpack, they take on Boston College in Raleigh next week then go to Louisville. Then they finally get their bye. They don't get their first bye till October 25th. You look at the stretch runs, Syracuse, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, North Carolina. There's no reason to think this isn't a bowl team. They, they should go to a bowl game this year, given the schedule. Yeah, and I think that's certainly the goal, is getting to a bowl and getting those 25 extra practices in bowl season with this extremely young team that Dave Dorn has is going to be invaluable going forward, but there isn't any reason in the world that NC State cannot compete against that schedule going forward. You mentioned the youth, the Wolfpack, with 51 freshmen on its roster. That's true freshmen and redshirt freshmen, an extremely young team. They also need to get a win in the ACC. That's something that hasn't happened since 2012, yeah. Tom O'Brien's last game. Yeah, that's certainly eluding Dave Doan early, but nine true freshmen enrolled early went through spring and summer camp hoping to have roles and a lot of those guys have roles give them another birthday and this team's going to be much better Clemson not putting anybody back deep and wherever the ball is down it'll just be a kneel down from there This Clemson coaching staff, especially defensive coordinator Brent Venables, told us this team has to play 60 minutes. He wanted to see a complete effort. The defense was phenomenal this afternoon, and the offense did most of its work in the first half. And yeah. there is Venables. Yeah, Venables right there. And he got in the grill of his defensive team and said he needs four quarters. And he got that today. They didn't actually need four quarters, but his defense has played one of the most impressive defensive games. Remember, NC State was not a fly-by-night offense coming into this team or this game, and Venable's defense just completely smothered them today. NC State was averaging more than 500 yards per game entering play. 
They were held to just 156, a lot of those coming in garbage time. Clemson with its first shutout in ACC play since 1998. The Tigers go to 2-1 and one in conference play. NC State has now lost 10 straight in the ACC. Sports Center U is next. Texas Tech, Kansas State at the top of the hour. Let's send you to the studio now. And Matt Schick.